So next up, we have someone who worked very hard to get here. Michael Kajubi is a foundation scholarship recipient from the IGLTA Foundation and founded McBurn Tours in Uganda in 2013 after seeing firsthand how hard it was for a member of the LGBT society or the LGBT community to be accepted by society and have gainful employment. His, this struggle and his passion for adventure is what led him to start McBurn Tours. It's a, McBurn Tours and Travel, a tour company offering safaris and adventure in Uganda as a way to employ those rejected by society due to their sexual orientation and a safe haven for LGBT youth. McBurn Foundation actually gives back directly to the ill and elderly in the rural Uganda communities and it's funded entirely by McBurn Tours and Travel. Today, Michael will be sharing with us an insider's perspective on LGBTQ travel in Uganda. Please join me in welcoming Michael Kajubi to the stage. Greetings, friends. In keeping the IGLTA tradition, I'll say bonsoir, guten Abend, konnichiwa. And my local language, musivye mutia, meaning how has been your day? First and foremost, I'd like to thank the IGLTA Foundation for giving me this chance to come and attend this occasion. I am Michael Kajubi, founder and director of Makban Tours and Travel in Uganda, East Africa. I started Makban Tours and Travel in 2013. This was after my mother's death, who was sick for 28 years with rheumatism arthritis, but only cared for by my grandmother. She passed on in 2007, and then it, I took care of my grandmother since then, and she also passed on afterwards. I stayed alone with no family. So with my last employment, I lost my job, 2013. This was at the peak when the kill the gay bill was introduced in Uganda. You know all the negatives about the homophobia in Uganda. Not easy to find employment as a gay man, especially if you're rejected by society and if you're rejected by family. So I had this passion because of my story of my mother and grandmother. I started helping out the elderly. And then many of those who are like me, rejected by society, not having employment, these are the LGBTQ. They, I got hold of them sold them the points that of my passion, of course, to give them employment so that they give back to the community by supporting the elderly. And all this we are doing through Macban Tours and Travel. I do love travel. And just like St. Augustine said, the world is a book. And those who do not travel, read only one page. You will agree with me that travel exposes one to learn about the different cultures of the different parts of the world. I am on my journey to visit as many places as possible so, can, so that I can read as many pages of the book. This is my first time in North America. Every country or community has its strengths and weaknesses successes and challenges. Yes, 
I'll say what most of you are thinking right now. Uganda suffers from widespread homophobia. But as it happens in many countries around the world, through hard work in education, dialogue, and one-on-one -on -one interactions, through tourism and business, we can change this. We in Uganda have a long way to go in establishing the rights deserved for our LGBTQ citizens. The road is long and uphill. But we have started and we have made some progress. Article 21 of the Ugandan Constitution clearly states that equality and freedom from discrimination. It guarantees protection against discriminatory legislations for all citizens. However, with this clear mandate in the Constitution for the protection of all citizens, we continue to recognize government oppression of the LGBT community in Uganda through harsh legislations like the infamous Kill the Gay Bill that was turned into law in 2014. But the good news is that the Constitutional Court of Uganda nullified that law. <clears throat> Despite the criminal laws and prevailing negative attitudes by the general population in Uganda, the LGBT community has continued to fight for the rights of its members. There is a growing and strong civil society working tirelessly to advance the rights of LGBTQ persons in Uganda so that they may have access to health services, to justice, and legal literacy. It is through such efforts <clears throat> that for the first time in 2012, we were able to hold our gay pride. While it was a handful of us then, the celebration grew to over 500 plus people in 2015. This was an indication that the community was willing to take risks for their visibility and it later resulted in two government oppression. For two years in the row, in 2016 and 2017, venues for the Pride were raided and threats sent against the organizers of the Pride. Such is the life of LGBT persons in Uganda. But even with a dark cloud over our lives, we continue to challenge the societal benefits in discrimination. While there is no dedication, dedicated LGBTQ hangout in Uganda, there are different spots where LGBTQ people are able to hang out with the rest of the population without danger. And we know for LGBTQ people, for a Thursday night, just go to this bar. Friday night, the other one is open. Saturday, wink. <laughs> This didn't come overnight, but rather by continued resilience of the civil society organization like Sexual Minorities Uganda. This is an umbrella organization for the LGBTQ rights minority defenders and the community at large. <coughs> this hard work has seriously paid off by earning recognition of our organization and leaders of the movement. In 2011, the executive director of Sexual Minorities Uganda was awarded both the 2011 Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights Award and the Raftor Prize for his work on behalf of the LGBTQ rights in Uganda. Such recognition has greatly contributed to the security of our movement and it has showed government and those against us that the entire world is watching. In late 2014, LGBTQ Ugandans published the first edition of an LGBTQ magazine. This move has been dubbed as reclaiming the media campaign by distinguished Ugandan activists during our 2016 elections. 
our former prime minister, became the first Ugandan presidential candidate to, op to openly oppose homophobia. He did not win, but his voice was loud and clear. In 2017, several police officers from the Kampala Metropolitan Police Area, that is the capital, were ordered by police headquarters to attend a workshop on LGBTQ rights. The police spokesman said, what the training is aimed at is to teach our field officers to appreciate that minorities have rights and that should be respected. I wanted to share these few successes so that you understand what the community is doing to ensure our equality. Equality may not come today, but neither will it be far in the distant future. The change is coming now. What does it mean? What does the, situation, the LGBT situation mean for travel in Uganda? A beautiful country that has much to offer to tourists like you. I would like very much to share the other side of Uganda. Usually not talked about the media. What I've been talking about is what you see on TV and here on in the media, right? The beautiful country that I'm proud to call home is known as the Pearl of Africa. And it does receive LGBTQ travelers. We as McBurn Tours and Travel and some few other companies guide, we guide these travelers and keep close contact at all phases, taking special care of each and every guest at all times of the safari as their confidential and trusted travel partner in Uganda. Uganda has so much to offer to every person, regardless of one's sex, race, religion. For example, the source of the Nile, which is the longest river in the world, the amazing mountain gorillas, the animals in the wilderness, the fresh waters in the lakes, the natural resources, and many business investment opportunities. When I decided to begin McBurn Tours and Travel, my intention was, and is still, to help the needy elderly and the minority youth that are not, that have been not recognized by society, rejected by their families and other people, which I do through the McBurn Foundation, funded entirely by the travel company. It is not easy finding employment in Uganda if one is labeled gay. So I want to provide employment and skills to more LGBTQ people in Uganda. I envisioned a safe working space for LGBTQ people, helping our clients to feel secure in our dear motherland. When you come to Uganda, as long as you don't kiss on the street, you are safe. I've had my own share of challenges setting up and launching the business. While the Ugandan government is known for promoting tourism within the country and abroad, its stance on my community has greatly affected business. In 2014, at the height of the anti-gay bill that was signed into the law by the president, though later repealed, Many tourists postponed and others canceled their trips to Uganda. As a new business, then just into our first year of operation, it hit us hard. We had to lay off these minority youth from their jobs. It hurts terribly to watch a dream damaged by misleading statements from selfish government officials and religious leaders. If only they gave us a chance as a community to showcase what our potential is, what we are capable of giving, like the social work that I do and other people, 
they would realize how productive we are in contributing to the development of our economy, just like any other citizens, or even better. I know many of you have done better work than the others. We would then better be accepted. But as I have not, but I've not given up on changing the attitudes of my society. Recently, I've been teaming up with the advocates in the LGBTQ movement to determine how we can best ensure a safe environment for our LGBTQ travelers in the country. Continued advocacy with the Tourism Board of Uganda and the Ministry of Tourism has resulted in assurances that our guests will be protected and are welcome to visit. Recently, when I joined the IGLTA last year, I embarked on getting more allies in the tourism sector in Uganda to ensure that Uganda is a safe de destination for LGBTQ travelers. We have been building strategic partnerships with the hotel industry, which seems to be fast growing as compared to the government agencies. We hope more partners within the tourism industry around the world will join us in this struggle to help us showcase the best of Uganda, which we desire to share with all of you and many more. Those who travel bring a big impact to the world. As more LGBTQ tourists venture in our country, Uganda, Ugandans will learn firsthand of who we are, who our community is, and how LGBTQ tourism can be a benefit to them. The person-to-person -person contact between the tourists and the hotel, the restaurants, the drivers, the guides, the shopkeepers, will slowly but surely encourage a change in the thoughts of Ugandans. I believe that travelers learn and make big impacts to the society in which they visit. The IGLTA has thus far made a deep impact in countries around the world. And I know with your help, all of you, the same will happen in Uganda. Do not be afraid to visit my beautiful country. Thank you all, forever proud.